I'm in Colombia. I'm gonna be here for the summer. But why Colombia? You know guys that I've been making a lot of content about my beautiful country, Mexico. But for the summer, I want to change a little bit of scenery. Colombia is a very important country for us because Colombia is a country where my husband and I met in 2011. 11 years now. When we met here in Colombia, we were so young. I was 21 years old. I met a lot of friends. I had good parties. And it was the first time that I left Mexico. Of course, this is a very, very important country that I keep in my heart. And now that we're together, we are married, we said we should go to Colombia at some point. And well, here we are. Of course, I was very excited when we booked the flights. So I started to join these Facebook groups to see the vibe, what's happening with the foreigners living in the places where we are going to visit in Colombia. We wanted to see how they are managing living in these places. And I started to see something that actually, it was a little bit of concern for me. A lot of people were saying, Oh, Colombia is not like it used to be before. It doesn't feel safe. A lot of people were saying they are stealing my phone, my money. A lot of comments like that in Medellin. And then Ta, the YouTuber who stayed with me last year at home, uh, she came to Colombia as well last year. And she left Colombia after a few weeks because she said that she didn't feel safe in Medellin. She got robbed at night point. And that made me think, was it a coincidence? Is it happening too much? So I thought, I don't want to be scared. I want to go to Colombia. I want to, to be with my husband in Colombia. So I want to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start by telling you the positive things that I really enjoy about Colombia that are very, very different compared to Mexico, but also the negative things that I perceive. I'm not saying that this is true. It's just the things that I perceive that I already do different compared to Mexico. And I think this might be useful for you too if you're planning to travel to Colombia. So I'm in Colombia now. I've been traveling for four days in Colombia. I arrived in Bogota and now I'm in Taganga in the, to the north of Colombia. And I want to tell you everything, how I feel, what's happening in my surroundings. I have a lot to say already. Will I find the same vibe I found 10 years ago when I arrived here for the first time? I think this summer is going to be very exciting for me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next videos on my trip to Colombia. I actually want to put the name to this series. It should be like traveling to the place I fell in love. We are staying in Taganga. Taganga is located to the north of Colombia, next to Santa Marta. This town is a very small town. It only has 3,000 people. As you can see, it's very green. We are next to the beach. Uh, we're in the middle of the jungle, and that's why we are here. We're very excited to visit Tayrona. You've probably seen it in other pictures. It's a very beautiful beach with jungle. We want to visit Minca, and of course, Cartagena. Cartagena is also very close from here. And as we are working online during the week, we needed an Airbnb with good internet connection. That's why we are in this beautiful Airbnb. We haven't enjoyed the beach because we are working, but working from here is, is nice, isn't it? The food is delicious. We didn't cook today, we came to a, a house or a small place to have a, in, in Mexico, we say comida corrida. Here they say corriente. So, comida ejecutiva. Or comida ejecutiva, right? What is this? You'll get soup, you'll, you'll get a main dish, you'll get uh, water of the day, like kind of uh, juice, and that's it. I order fish, I'm gonna be eating a lot of fish, and I'm going to pay 15,000 pesos, Colombian pesos. It's more or less similar compared to Mexico. 
Oh, no. uh, oh, a little bit cheaper because we're next to the sea, the fish is fresh, and we're going to get uh, mojarra, the whole fish. So, yeah, I think it's cheaper here. It depends on the place as well. This is just a house, but houses are much better because the lady is cooking in her own house. So I'm sure this is going to be great. When you know the food is fresh, look, the food is steeping. <laughs> this bill that you see here is fake. This is the highest denomination note that Colombia has. It's equivalent to $13, more or less, right? $13 US dollars. And I had a very interesting experience with this. I bought something on the streets to a guy and I paid with 50,000 Colombian pesos. The guy disappeared because he didn't have change. He went for change. He came back and he said, oh, I have bad news for you. Uh, the, the bill that you gave me is fake. And I was like, what? I withdrew the money from the ATM, from the bank. How can it be fake? And I, we told this to the man and he said, well, I don't know. This is a bill that you, that you gave me. He even said, it's very weird that the bank gave this to you. Maybe somebody else gave this bill for, to you. What could I do in those moments? So I just paid with another bill and he said, okay, this is fine. And I'm, he said, I'm sorry for what happened to you. But what do you think what happened? Hey guys, just a quick interruption to mention that this video is sponsored by me. If you are interested in living in Mexico or traveling to Mexico and you feel that you're stuck in Spanish or you want to learn Spanish, I offer Spanish conversation courses to help you thrive in Spanish. In these courses, you'll have live classes, material, vocabulary lists, videos where we're going to communicate in between classes. But not only that, you're going to have live classes with me, another professional teacher and a tutor. This is with the intention to help you speak in Spanish and to listen in Spanish. And if you already can speak Spanish, but you want to improve your conversation skills, I also have fluency training courses. In these courses, we talk about culture, Mexican phrases, tradi Mexican traditions, all you need to get you ready for Mexico. I'm going to leave my website below, book a course and see you there. I told you that in this series, I wanted to tell you the prices, how much I'm spending, and I'm gonna start for the Airbnb. I told you this Airbnb is very nice, and this cost me eight, well, cost us, my husband and I, 800 US dollars. We wouldn't pay this to rent a house in Mexico. So this is just uh, like a little treat that we, gave ourselves. I'm very conscious that I am here just for four days. It's nothing basically at the moment that I'm recording this video. I know that I will have a better perspective in the future. I want to talk to you about some negative things that I've seen so far that I don't usually feel in Mexico. And again, again, I'm very conscious that I've been here just for four days. But this is what I'm feeling. And this is one of the reasons of why I'm recording this video in this Airbnb instead of going to the town and show you a little bit more of the town. The reason is that I have to do a lot of thinking if I'm going to bring my camera with me or not. Every time I go out, I have this feeling that I don't want to get roughed. This is the vibe I feel. And let me tell you, I'm very conscious that Mexico and a lot of parts of Mexico are not safe. I've been traveling around Mexico a lot and I always bring my camera with me and it's fine. I, I, I'm not worried about someone seeing my camera. Nobody stares at me because I'm bringing a camera, but here it's not the same. I don't see a lot of tourists carrying a camera. And again, I'm from Mexico. I know Mexico is not the safest place on earth. Making YouTube videos is my job. 
And if you make YouTube videos and if you're planning to come to Colombia, it's something that you have to consider. And in this point, I agree with Ta and even with Dan, another YouTuber who said the same. Another interruption to thank all my patrons who are supporting this channel. It's very incredible that you're enjoying my content and thanks to you, I'm able to have time to create more content for you guys. Thank you very much. I, I would also like to ask you guys, what would you like to see about Colombia? What would be interesting for you? I already have uh, some ideas about comparisons between Mexico and Colombia. Um, of course, I want to show you the places I, I go to, but let me know what else would you like to see? Of course, if you come to Colombia, you have to try all the delicious fruits that they have in these stalls. And you have to ask for a jugo, a juice. Lulo, oh, this is really, really great. It's not sweet, but it's not sour. It's just a perfect combination if you're on the beach. Maracuya, look at these big mar maracuyas. I'm gonna order a jugo, and this is going to cost me 5,000 Colombian pesos which is around one dollar, a little bit more than one dollar. Everything looks like paradise. And it is, it's a nice place. It's a small town, a very nice place to, to spend a few days very away from, from people, from everything. But that also has some disadvantages. Some disadvantages that I had forgotten when I used to travel a lot. And the first one, is the internet connection, actually. We booked this Airbnb just because it said that it had good internet connection. That was the first reason, actually. It wasn't cheap. We paid much more than we used to pay, in, than we are paying for a house in Mexico, in, the, in Queretaro. I, you know, guys, that I work online all the time. I teach online, I have my school online, and the internet started to fail. That was a very stressful situation for me. Uh, because that means that I could also be losing money. Now I need to find a solution, but that will cost much more money than the budget that, that we already had. I'll go to a co-working space to, to work during the week, but I guess I'm gonna meet a lot of people in the co-working space. This Airbnb is very nice. We're on the top of, of the mountain here in Taganga. But today, the first day, started to rain a lot. There's a storm, basically. All the floor here is wet. Our room is on the other side. The door is not solid. It has a lot of holes. It's, it's not a door. It's just something to put there. The water is coming in a lot. There's a leak here, and in our room there's another leak. It's not a deal breaker, but it's very interesting. It's an adventure. <laughs> we have lizards in our home, but we also have a lot of mosquitoes. Look at my leg, it's so full, it's beaten. And I put a lot of repellent on my body and it's not working anyway. The good news is that the lizards eat mosquitoes. That's an advantage because mosquitoes are eating me, so lizards are helping me to eat them. The consequence is that they are pooping all over the place. They are doing their work, they are eating a lot of mosquitoes from what I can see. <laughs> what would you prefer? Poop and no mosquitoes or mosquitoes and no poop. <laughs> well, I think that's everything for this video. I'm very excited to show you my perspectives in the next video, the places where I go to. I'm gonna be camping, I'm gonna be in hostels. I'm very excited for all the experience. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for this new series. Adios.